Compliance archaeology is more my focus. So in compliance archaeology, there are projects that are proposed by, say, maintenance, or let's take a different one, um, resource management. They want to go into an area and they want to plant, you know, native plants, or they want to see, um, you know, an area. Um, and that involves ground disturbance, so they've got to dig holes in order to plant the plant. I go out there ahead of time and I check out the area and make sure they're not going to be digging archaeological sites or um, you know, tromping through areas that have archaeological features. So I go out there and I recognize you know, whether those features are there or not. So when I was hired at the Nature Conservancy, I was hired as their ecologist. Moreover, I was hired as their community ecologist. That is, not a community of people, but the community of living plants and animals that form these different kinds of forests and shrublands and grasslands that you can find across the islands. It was my duty to identify and describe the many different kinds of ecological systems that you can find in the islands from coast all the way up to the summits. And so I was set loose in the islands to explore all of these places. I have been to so many remote locations where you're dropped by helicopter and then have to hike all the way back down to civilization. Um, and along the way observing which plants and animals and what kinds of natural communities they form. Um, in, the, in the end, we found that there were over 200 different kinds of distinct ecosystem types in the Hawaiian Islands and that nearly all of them are ecosystem types that are found nowhere else on Earth. Personally, I feel it, it's a really, really important uh, job that many of the biologists across Hawaiian Islands are doing. Um, we have such a limited amount of resources here, especially our native ecosystem, our native plants, our native animals. Uh, that's all we have left. You know, Hawaii has been known as the in, uh, endangered capital of the world, which is something that we would like to change, but it's, it's true. We really are the endangered species capital of the world. 90% uh, of our organisms are found only here, nowhere else. If we lose them, they're gone for good. Uh, we have no way of bringing them back. When you work in a place like Hawaii and you're thinking about the challenges of saving native plants and animals, you think, well, what's the major threat to them? Is it development? You know, is it resorts going in or more and more residential areas? No, the main problem that faces Hawaiian plants and animals is non-native plants and animals. Plants and animals that have been introduced to the Hawaiian Islands over the last two centuries or more and have begun to spread uncontrolled in the, in the forested ecosystems and other ecosystems around us. Inside these corals, there's a little single-celled limu, a little algae, and it has a symbiotic relationship with the coral. And when the temperatures get one or two degrees Celsius higher than the ambient summer temperatures, then the, that zooxanthellae will leave the corals and the corals turn white. Now the color of the corals, the, you see these brown and bright greens, these have to do with the zooxanthellae. When the zooxanthellae leave the coral, then the corals turn white. If the corals don't return, if the temperatures don't return to normal within a few weeks, the corals will die. There have been some major bleaching events throughout the world. And here in Hawaii, we had a bleaching event on a small scale in 1996. But we were fortunate enough that we had winds and we also had the temperatures return to normal in time for the corals to recover. But these are happening more and more, these bleaching events throughout the world. You cannot just measure how a plant uptakes water, um, transpiration, evaporation, and minus rainfall or whatever and get a water budget. The soil is this huge storage down there that hydrologists study more of and it's it's main it has sort of a dynamic interaction and feedback with the trees. If you don't have enough soil moisture, it can affect the life of the tree, you can kill a tree if there's not enough. But and vice versa, the trees taken out affects the soil moisture, which affects how much goes into the groundwater, which can affect the stream, which can affect the fish pond. So I think a lot of the research now that I'm getting into in our birds it's not pure hydrology, it's, it's water and it's different forms interacting with plants, with, with lohi, with fish ponds, with um, the whole system, looking at pieces of that. My jellyfish that I study is actually an invasive species, so it's not terribly important to 
our native ecosystem. In fact, Cassiopeia, the upside down jellyfish, is a problem in native fish ponds where they like that habitat, they like calm, shallow waters, and so they actually infest the bottoms of many fish ponds on the windward side of this island, causing a problem for you know, maintenance of the fish pond, as well as um, if there's recreation at the fish pond area, collecting fish, they do sting very badly. So you might have some either kids or instructors getting stung by jellyfish. My vision is that, of course, Hawaiians this is a Hawaiian place, and Hawaiians are naturalist, natural scientists. There's, there's no reason why this shouldn't be immediately something that we as Hawaiians take over. I mean, it's my intention that we take it all over. You know? Behind me in this building, there are 60 PhD astronomers on that border. There's only one native Hawaiian in the building, and that's me. And that's, I think that's terrible waste of potential because I, I mean I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy but there's I mean a lot of more smart people than me you know? I mean there's tons of guys out there so I think that what I would like to do and the thing I really bring to this, this whole job is I'm always looking to increase our involvement here get more of us here I would I would love that in 20 years that we uh, we are the majority here that we're not just, you know, one little guy in a little office.